So guys, here we have it, the 2014 MT-07 Special Edition Moto Cage, which is the MT-07 Turbo. Right guys, let's jump straight into this, no messing around. First thing is the front fork. The reason why I'm starting here is because this is usually the first thing that people recognize when they see it parked up on the side of the road, especially those who have already got an MT-07. I've got straight for the Yamaha R6 2005 model front forks. I've had them anodized in a custom color, a bit of a bronzy, ready color I was trying to go for, but I think they've turned out great. I didn't want to go for the typical gold that everybody usually goes for, or usually comes with a bike. Triple trees are all custom made, billet made. You can't buy these from factory, you can't buy these from the shop straight out. These are all custom made to my specifications on this bike and they're a one-off edition. If you do want to have your own custom made, I can send you the link to the person that made these for me and hopefully he can help you out. Up top, we've got the Cosso Thunderbolt headlight, LEDs inside, absolutely fantastic. At night, you can see everything on the road and everybody can see you, so it's a win-win situation on that one there. On the top of these on the corners here on the brackets, we have little indicators from Motodemic. Absolutely fantastic, very, very bright. Again, another fantastic product. On to one of my more favorite conversions on this bike is changing the MT-07 cluster out for the XSR 700 cluster. The reason why I've done this is more of a visual pleasing effect, to be honest. I much prefer the round cluster compared to the MT-07, which is a bit more of a thicker elongated one which is also over the top of the handlebars on this one here i've mounted it more forward and more to the right hand side which is a lot easier for me to see whilst i'm riding it is just a plug and play modification the only caveat i would say is if you're going for a second hand cluster make sure you have one that almost mimics the same amount of miles you've already got on your bike previously so when i had this engine rebuilt for this bike it roughly had 500 miles on it before I changed to this cluster. So just bear that in mind if you do go out changing your cluster, you will need to get one that's got something that's uh, almost identical to the one that you've already got in terms of miles. As you can see, I've got totally different handlebars. These are LSL XD1 drag bars. Right here after Vans grips, I'll be changing those out soon. I did used to like those, but I'm not too much into the look of them right now. And I've also got side mounted mirrors, which are absolutely fantastic. From the front and straight to the back, so I promise you we are getting there, we're going to get to the turbo, but first I just wanted to get a couple more pointers out of the way before we get to the exciting and nitty gritty stuff. Six inch swing arm extensions, created by a guy called Ben at Extreme Creations based in Australia. Absolutely fantastic product and service. The craftsmanship and the workmanship on these products, I really can't fault in the slightest. The reason why I've gone for these is because when you're doubling the horsepower on your motorcycle, it helps to keep the front end down. I know a lot of you guys will be thinking it's really good fun to be popping the wheelies all the time. Don't get me wrong, absolutely is, I love it. But really the goal of this was to make as much power as I could on this bike and to keep the front end down and have all the power going straight to the rear wheel. I don't want the front wheel coming up all the time, I want the acceleration instantly there as soon as the turbo kicks in. So when it comes to putting a turbo on your bike and you want that power to weight ratio to really kick in and, and really be there, these definitely help keep the front end down. <laughs> What we're actually here for is the turbo. So let's do this. This has actually got a modified GT15 turbo with a 7.5 wastegate actuator built into it. This has been created and modified by Ben at Extreme Creations in Australia. So if you want to purchase this product, you can just go straight to his store, Extreme Creations in Australia, and purchase this online. Honestly, it goes like the clappers. From 65 to 70 brake horsepower, up to 120 brake horsepower, which I'm running at right now, at nine pounds of boost tuned into the bike. It, it, it's, it's crazy. I mean, it's still not the most powerful bike out there on the road, obviously, but the way that it delivers it with the power to weight ratio is fantastic. The guys at the dyno center where I took this bike to be professionally built have told me that the power to weight ratio on this bike is near enough comparable, or should I say close to the MT-10. So starting from the back to the front, 
as you can see right here underneath the seat, this is actually the Boost T control valve. That allows me to go from four pounds of boost all the way up to nine pounds of boost. When I'm at four pounds of boost, I'm running around the 108 to 110 brake horsepower. And when I turn it up, which is one full turn for myself, how it's currently tuned in, is running at 120 brake horsepower at 70 foot pounds of torque. Straight into fuel injectors, we swapped those out from the MT07 OEM injectors because at around seven pounds of boost, the OEM injectors spray pattern just isn't good enough. It's just not adequate enough to allow for more power to be had. So we've changed those out to PECO injectors. They've all been custom harnessed and wired into the bike by Big CC down in London. A huge shout out to those guys. I will link those down in the box below. Moving straight towards the engine, we have high rated con rods. These are Carrillo con rods, both rated to 500 brake horsepower per, per rod. The pistons have been changed out. They've been changed from 11.5 to 1, which is the OEM spec, down to the 10.1 compression ratio. Extremely thankful to the guys in America who have helped design these pistons for me because they weren't on the market anywhere else at the time. When we had these created, these were the first ones on the market publicly made for the MT-07, if you want to go down the turbo route, of course. So I believe that I may have had the first turbo pistons in the UK to myself and custom made through the guys at the shop. The inlet and outlet springs have been modified as well. We also have heavy duty clutch springs on the opposite side. And as in turn for modifications internal, that's as far as we've gone right now, apart from the ARP head studs, which helps keep things a bit more in place. This is what we're running at currently. When it comes to performance on the road, I honestly believe that no MT-09 should be able to beat the MT-07 Turbo. But I'm only going off the stats on this bike. So we're running at 120 horsepower at 70 foot-pounds of torque. I'm sure that any MT-09 that comes straight out of factory doesn't have those stats. And maybe any MT-09 that's been dyno-tuned as well. Um, what I would like to see and do is actually have a drag run against the MT-09 or an XSR 900. So for anybody that's out there that wants to put this debate to rest, to bed, please get in touch, let's do it. I would love to show these guys that want to know more about the, uh, the turbo and this conversion, what's faster, an MT-09 or an MT-07 turbo. Let's do it, it would be great, it would be exciting.